I'm back at Into Moto in Warrington today. It's a scooter day and it's an off road scooter as well. I've been told I'm not allowed to play off road though. Sad face. Anyway, let's just have a look around it, usual fashion. Let's see what it's all about. This is the Sim ADX125. What do we think? I have done a review on the Honda ADV X, not to be confused with this bike. However, there are similarities. This is randomly beeping at me. So this bike is made for, I would say, very, very, very light off-roading. Gravel track, maybe something like that. I wouldn't risk taking it on anything other than that and uh, I'll show you why when we're going around the bike but aesthetically looks nice keeps beeping though let's do the walk round so there's the close-up there isn't any spoked wheels or anything like that and looking at the clearance between the wheel and caliper you don't want to get this too muddy because you'll just end up, you'll be going nowhere. But it's got a little bit of grip on the tyres. It's got disc brakes, front and rear. And I haven't actually had a go on this bike yet, so I can't confirm what the brakes are like. But as always with my videos, I will be going on a test ride shortly. Currently on its centre stand, there is a side stand as well. Just a very common thing with scooters, isn't it? You always get both. Decent seat. Looks like loads of room for the rider. Nice back seat for passenger. And a nice solid grab handle as well. The rear peg, they're all right. They feel quite substantial. They're quite chunky. But unlike a couple of scooters I've been on recently, they're not doing anything to hide them. I don't have a problem with it. I think some bikes the over-engineer. We'll see how the suspension is with that. Certainly when we leave here and we're going up the cobbles. Nice little face. Looks like the Transformers badge looking at it like that. Quite a nice looking scooter this as far as scooters go. I do like the way it looks. I like that you haven't got the step through here. However, I will talk practicality very shortly and that does affect it because you don't get the standard bag hook let's check the screen out very nice tft buttons it's quite a gucci scooter this isn't it so it, it's got a couple of buttons but it hasn't got loads horn indicators high low beam in your flash other side you do have your engine start You've got your hazard lights. You've got what looks like a bit of stop-start technology going on here as well. So we'll see how that works. I like that in my car. It's a nice way of saving fuel. On a bike, I don't know, I find it a bit unnerving in traffic when the engine just cuts out on you, but we'll see how we get on while we're riding it today. Oh, nice little USB port there. So you can use a USB to charge your phone, use for sat nav, whatever. My preference is always the quad lock, which I would mount somewhere around here, trying not to obstruct the screen with your phone. Let's open the seat, have a look what we've got under here. Albeit we haven't got the step through, so there's no bag up to speak of. There's a decent amount of storage there, so if you're riding, I'm sure you could put a rucksack certainly big enough to put a helmet in there now anyone that watches my videos that's seen my videos before you would know i don't generally throw loads of specifications at you i don't throw loads of figures at you and i do that purely because a lot of the bikes i take out i'm quite late to the party let's say so if you are interested in a lot of the bikes i take out you've already watched a million youtube videos already so I'm just telling you what they look like and how they feel. However, certain bikes that I take out, if 
I feel there's not a massive YouTube presence so something like this I've not seen a great deal on YouTube so I'll, I'll throw a few things at you liquid cooled 125 it has got ABS it has got traction control it's got all the safety things that you want let's just go for a ride we'll see how it compares to other 125s I've been on they, they were made for towns and cities let's be honest albeit this is an off-road type scooter you're not going to do much off-roading i'd be shocked but if you have got one and you do a fair amount of off-roading let me know because i would be very interested i'm not going to do any off-roading on this today because this bike is a new bike that's for sale within two moto so i'm not going to get it dirty damaged anything like that so i would love to hear from you if you've bought one if you've got something like this I've been on the Honda ADV-X. That bike, you can see it's made for off-roading, knobbly tyres, everything else. This, I think it's more for styling, but let's go for a ride. And as always, if you want more reviews like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It does really help. I'm gonna grab my helmet and gloves and let's go for a ride. Hmm. Let's see how we get on when you're vertically challenged so like myself i'm five foot eight tall and i find a lot of scooters do come with quite a high seat now this doesn't look particularly high however you still have to throw your leg over it and i, I like the bikes with a step through in that you can just put your leg through it you don't have to do the splits or throw your leg over um so you don't get that with this you've got this so it's as hard to go over that way as it is to go over that way but yeah i'll throw my leg over it and we'll see what it's like height wise as you can see i'm pretty much hovering around being flat foot so for me that's quite a low seat as far as scooters go certainly the modern ones i find myself oh hello find myself on my tiptoes quite often whereas with this i'm pretty much flat foot both sides so it is a comfortable position for somebody who's got shorter legs like myself as far as seat position goes typical scooter really your feet are quite high but you do have the luxury because it is a scooter your seats are quite big so you can shuffle back you can stretch out there is like a highway peg type position on there for a longer journey you can stretch your leg out or you can just ride it as is like this yeah it's, it's quite a nice comfortable position so i like it apart from the beeping um excuse the beeping this is full of tech albeit there's not loads of buttons and stuff to speak of here it has got loads of tech with its traction control abs you've got a lovely tft screen going on it is keyless as well so that's one less thing to worry about there is another little storage box just here on my left side the keys in my pocket don't need to faff about with that as long as you're near to the bike little twist on that and you are alive now this is what i was talking about so you've got little storage all there and you can see just by how far my hand goes in there put quite a lot of room there when you start it up it's bizarre where you normally hear the the engine and the battery working together and you usually get all of that noise when you try to start the engine you just don't get it with this it just goes from engine not being on to engine being on there you go literally press it and the engine's on so it's either on or off but you don't get the eh, 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 of the battery working to get the engine and yes that was my impression apologies yeah but you know what i mean you know the sound i mean and you just don't get it with this it's just it's like a luxurious start so we've got this cobble road and as far as comfort goes i'm not really feeling the bumps on my backside i am feeling a little bit on my arms but not a lot not a lot to be fair it's it's quite comfortable that i've certainly been on worse bikes up there throttle's nice and responsive as well i like that 
you don't have to wring its neck to get it to move. Just the slightest twist in the throttle and you are going. There's not really any wind protection. I know there's a screen there, but it's not really doing anything. It gets to 30 mile an hour really quickly. And that's what you want out of a 125. You want to keep up with traffic. You want to get to those normal road speeds. And this does it very, very quickly. You might be all right for a bit of traffic light scrambling. But I've, I've always found that with sim scooters in general, certainly the 125s they do seem to be quite impressive on the performance i won't have a bad word said about them because i've been on quite a lot of scooters in my time and in the 125s i don't think you can beat a sim engine not for performance anyway if there is a bit of wind noise i apologize it is i would say breezy today it's not really windy it's just a little bit of a breeze now i am doing 30 we've got a bit of a 40 stretch here so let me just take it up to 40 mile an hour yeah and it does it in a matter of a second or two which for me performance wise is as good as you're gonna get other scooters if you wind them on a little bit they can sound a bit like an angry wasp this doesn't it has like a low pitch rumble to it so it it feels like it's not straining at all engine cuts off completely because i'm not used to the bike not used to the system or anything yet it is quite unnerving because i'm hoping with all this traffic behind me that it restarts little twist on the throttle look at that and it works flawlessly as you would expect a new bike to work if it's going to have it, it better work, and it does. Comparing this to other sim scooters around the 125 range, some of those start at £2,500, so you are getting a more premium feeling bike, certainly with your TFT screen, your stop-start technology, your keyless system. You know, you've got quite a lot going on with this bike, so you are paying that little bit more. Would I pay that little bit more? Well, do you know what? If I had three and a half thousand pound and that was my budget, then yeah, I probably would say something like this is worth the money. Would you be disappointed if you got a different sim at two and a half thousand pound? No, I don't think you would. I don't, I don't think it, you're gonna see a massive difference in performance between this and another 125 from sim they're gonna be very very similar it's just all down to your looks your technology and you know the safety features that this has with the traction control abs all that stuff so it it comes with a lot of kit but you're paying the little bit extra for that kit I've not really got any issues with this bike full stop. I'm going to go out there and say as a 125, comfort, performance, the whole package, it probably is one of the best that I've been on. And I've got used to the engine cutting out now when I stop as well, and I'm not panicked at all. It's just another nice, comfortable feature. I'm not sat here with any sort of rumble or noise, and I'm, I'm saving fuel as we speak you've paid that little bit extra for this bike you've got to recoup it somehow haven't you and you can do it by saving fuel little twist and away we go yeah i like it i do like that it's very 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 good system that uphill let's see if it struggles with my lard arse on no still picking speed up going up that hill i'm heavy you, you can tell i know the screen puts 10 pounds on you but I look at myself and think it, it puts 10 stone on me, but it it doesn't, unfortunately, I'm just fat. No, I'm big boned, but the bike copes with it. The weight means nothing. If you are a wee slip of a lad or a girl, this bike will feel quite, quite nippy indeed. Feels nippy for me. If you've got one, let me know. Let me know uh, how you've got on with it. Let me know, in particular, let me know uh, performance. Let me know what top speeds you've had out of it. Let me know 
what it's been like for you on a day-to-day -day basis i am always interested in real owners opinions and views because i go on these bikes and sometimes it can be a half an hour ride sometimes it can be a full day ride but generally i get them for a short period of time in comparison to you owners that live with them day in day out you get what you pay for that that's the summary of my conversation and it's true you do get what you pay for you buy something that is cheap you're going to get something that's cheap aren't you you buy something that's a little bit more expensive you're getting those extra touches you're getting the extra kit you're getting the well you're just getting more aren't you and that really sums up this bike you are getting more than what you would get on your average scooter cheers yes there are more expensive scooters out there there are but you can also save a hell of a lot of money probably up to a thousand pound by getting something cheaper there are other bikes available now into moto do have a massive selection of scooters they do have a, a really large selection of 125s at the minute i think looking at the bikes that they're getting in a lot of their focus is on the smaller capacity bikes they do have bigger bikes as well but they have a lot of smaller ones so if this was a bit too much for you and you wanted something a little bit cheaper there are other bikes in there that are available what i would say is if you get something cheaper than this it's not going to be as good as this and that's just fact you get what you pay for that's just it's just facts we all know it you get what you pay for put a link in the description to into moto but don't forget if you're interested in just a 125 in general if this doesn't tickle your pickle and you're after a geared 125 then there's loads in there smaller capacity bikes these guys have got you covered so yeah definitely my recommendation that's gonna do me it's miserable but it's not cold so i'm i'm not even complaining about the cold today i've changed anyway thanks for watching catch you all on the next one laters